Hello, it's Sarah. I just wanted to come on today. I was cleaning up my, my desk. My desk is so clean and organized. Um, after yesterday's chaotic, no it wasn't, it was great, um, YouTube Live, and I was changing out, I have these baskets that I get at the Dollar Tree, and I had, a, the green one matches my craft room. So I wanted to put everything in the green one. I don't know why. Anywho, I was moving things around and all of a sudden there was this big plop of paint in front of me and I'm like, where the heck did that come from? Well, these are the Jane Davenport paints. I bought these in a set for painting faces and three of them and I haven't been using them. I've used them a couple times. Mm, they're 1.35 fluid ounces and they're made by American Crafts, I'm pretty sure. Um, this one's the only one that didn't do it. But the other three on the same side have cracks, openings. This one, and it's like dried out right there so it didn't leak. But this was the one that got all over the place. So... I'm just going to put them in baggies and hope for the best and I'll, I mean I'll save them and I scooped back what I could back into the container but I mean that's not cool and I know it's uh, Jane's first go of it you know so I'm not holding it against her but uh, I don't know if American Crafts has ever done a tube acrylic before but uh, you know, I just ordered, and see, because I'm used to using craft paint, so I'm used to using this type of paint, um, and I mean, these get the little, see the little paint boogies, that's what I call them, I'm going to use, uh, but these little, they get little hard paint around the, um, around this little knob that fills the hole, but they usually click closed, and I mean, yeah, you can have accidents, but like look it'll it sometimes but usually once it hardens you can clean that right off and you get a nice seal um, so yeah that being said I just ordered some heavy body paints because I don't have a lot of these tube paints the only ones I do have are these Joe Sonia uh, acrylic gouache now I'm not sure what the difference between a gouache is and you know but it is acrylic paint and it's made by Chroma Acrylics Inc. Chroma. I've had these forever. I mean <clears throat> I don't know if there's a date on this but it, it's got to be 20 years because I mean I've taken I took a Joe Sonia class while well, it was with her son actually and that's when I bought these and I have about 10 different colors and I forgot about them so I went and these were okay look AC Moore had these 9 10 97 20 years ago there's an AC Moore sticker on here so um, yeah I uh, have had these a while and they're still good me and Maya played with these actually before then I also ha I just came across this iridescent rich gold um, by Liquitex Professional Acrylic, Acrylic Artist Color but I'm just looking at the different tubes like this is a very rubbery tube so it doesn't feel like it would crack these are like soft but it must have something to do with the way they sealed them and there may be a seam just going down the side I don't know what happened it's very weird because I mean I didn't I just picked them up and all three of them had it. So this is the Dina Wakely Media Acrylics. And um, like I said, I just ordered a bunch and, well, four or five. And these are two ounces. And I've seen that Dina cuts her bottles. She cuts them um, when she can't squeeze out any paint. Like when you get to the to end of the tube of toothpaste and you know there's some toothpaste down in there, you know, usually you can push it down and get it out. but she just cuts it and then scrapes it from the inside so um, we'll see how it goes but I'm not used to working with these bottles 
And I did end up getting the same type of nozzles. Well, here's G G Dina's. Um, and this one goes on the top of acrylic paint of these little paint bottles. So they have a similar product for these little bottles. Oops, come on. So very similar. Actually, this is a finer point. Dina's is a bit thicker. It's not a fine point. Um, because I got that for... I have the... Um, these little bottles, these fine line applicators. Let's see how it's different. So you fill these up with um, flow, it's not flow medium, it's um, like airbrush medium, I think it's called. Anywho, you know, so there, where there's a will, there's, oops, there's a way. This is the masking fluid. I've used this once. I wanna, I'm going to keep that out because I want to try that. But I'm going to, um, it's an exercise day and I haven't gotten my butt out there yet. I was going to go on the treadmill, but now I think I'll just wait till after dinner and go outside because it's hot again. It's not as humid, but I had to clean my desk. My desk was just getting on, I wasn't feeling very inspired. Um, and so I just wanted to show you that and I think before I do anything, any other projects, let me finish what I was doing here. I'm going to, oh, I wanted to show you one other thing. So yeah, so um, just look around. Actually, Hobby Lobby, I think I got these at Hobby Lobby too. These fine line applicators, but you have to fill these. And so I got that. And that one that goes on the regular brushes, I mean regular paint bottles, these should be fine. I'm going to put all these in my little green bucket. And I put my fluid acrylics in there, but <clears throat> I was just going to show you what I do. So this is all the brushes that I used yesterday, right? Or, you know, through, I mean, for a couple days, ever since I've been doing my art journal. Um... And I just wanted to talk about how you keep your brushes clean. Um, I am not a very neat artist by any means. I am not a stickler for cleaning stencils, and I know that's bad. Um, because I'm only going to wear them out faster if I don't clean them. They're not going to be, they're not going to work as well. And stuff like that. So it's worth it to take that extra second and clean them. You know, and I don't. But with my brushes, there's a quick way. You now, I, and I kind of got, and I've said this before, but I've gotten this from taking classes when you go to seminar. And, you know, you're in a class. You don't have time to go to the sink and all that stuff. So there is a product out there, and it's called, and I've talked about this before, Pink Soap. And this is the old bottle because I have a much bigger bottle. It looks different. Because like I said, this, this could be 20 years old, but I just keep refilling this little bottle because I like the little bottle. But all you do is you take some of the pink soap and dress the brush with it. I'm yelling. I know, I know I'm yelling. So put it on there. Set it aside. And if you're dry brushing, you don't want to get these wet at the time. I'm gonna, I should have showed you a different way to clean a dry brush. Oops, I, I didn't. Oh, I'll clean, my, I'll clean this mop. I'll show you that. But, you know, you just dress it in the stuff. So put it on and then pull your bristles nice and straight. And then when, see, look at this. This got, this is probably used for matte medium. Yeah, it definitely was. This is, was used for gluing. So when you put gesso, see, look, and that's stiff. I must, I put it in water, but then when I took it out, I never cleaned it. So I am just, the pink soap will break down whatever media you leave in your brush. So really dress it with that. And you can save a lot of brushes. Now, I only treat certain brushes badly. I try to keep an eye on, like this brush. This is an angle brush. It's getting a little frayed. I'll cut those off. But for the most part, I want this to stay chiseled. I don't want this to 
to fray on me. I need it to be nice. Same thing with a round brush. And these are a bit, these are just cheapies from AC Moore. So I'm sure this brush was like two, three dollars. It wasn't a lot. But, I mean, you don't want them to be a mess. You never want to jam your brushes down. When you're cleaning them, go side to side. You can go side to side, but don't jam it down to clean it because you'll mess up the bristles. It won't be a tool that you'll be able to, to use for a certain techniques. So, oh, my son just texted me. Yay. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. So, even the next day, you can just come, I mean, as long as you've rinsed them in water and they haven't been sitting overnight in glue, because it will be glued, you know, uh, you'll be okay. So you just dress it with pink soap. Right at my desk, I'll do this. Get it really in there. And pull those bristles straight. Get them straight. And I mean, there's paint down in the ferrule. There's definitely, I mean, I'm not a gentle painter. I am a rough crafter. I don't, I'm a rough everything, you know. I'm, I move fast. I don't think before I talk. It's just my nature. So I'm trying to work on some things and I, I, I have self-awareness. That's important. But, um, you know, you want to keep, especially like I love this, this brush. I don't know how long I've had it, but I just love the, they used to sell the American Painter at Michael's and you see how long the bristles are that means it'll hold more water the chisel is fine I mean that's fine but see how short these bristles are much short like it's just not long and I when I can load my brush and it has a lot of water in it that you can just go further anyway um, so yeah all right now this one's really stiff this is stiff I think I, I don't even know if I put this one in water I must have been using it at the end and to look, I mean it's, but I just keep pushing it through this pink soap and it is, the pigment is getting in the soap. Can you see that? The pigment just changed green or blue or whatever color it is. But yeah, for whatever reason, this can really break down the polymers and that paint, the plastics. And look, I just brought this brush back to life. I mean, it's soft again. And it's, again, a very cheapy brush. I'm sure I was just using it. It's not one of my go-to favorite brushes. But um, why should I just let it, you know, die? Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, it just went right out of my head. Um, so, all right, and then I want to show you one other thing. So everyone is into this. Uh, all right, so then I will just take all these to the sink in a minute and rinse them with warm water and pull the bristles and make sure they're nice and straight and let them dry and, and that's clean. That's, that's Sarah clean anyway. Okay, so I have this brush. Now, this is a mop brush and I use it to um, just gently tickle my floats to get them to blend out into the piece. And so it gets pigment on it, you know. I never dunk this in water to use it. It's not meant to be wet. I use it as a dry brush. So I wanted to show you how I would clean that. And even in the middle of a class, if it's just got too much, if it's you're working on white and stuff and you just have too much pigment on here, this is hand sanitizer. Good old, regular old, I guess it's alcohol, right? Moisturizing with aloe. Well, this is just from the probably like the dollar bin at Target or something. Equaline. I don't know. That's that might be Acme. Put a little bit of that out on your palette. Oh, itchy nose. Sorry. And gently. All right. Let me get a clean paper towel. Tap into it, and then wipe it on a paper towel. And the pigment comes off and it doesn't wet your brush. Your brush, the alcohol just kind of evaporates. So just tap it into there. And look at that. Look at all the pigment that comes off. I forget who told me this. It was someone in an art class somewhere. Because that's what the art community does. It shares. So look, there's a little bit of blue right here.
And yeah, it gets a little wet. It's it's damp, if that, but it will dry. It's definitely dry. It's cool to the touch, but I wouldn't consider it wet. But it's basically dry and it's clean. Now you could absolutely clean it with the pink soap as well if you're not going to be using it that day. You know, and it'll dry by the next day. It'll be perfectly clean and um, ready to go. But, you know, especially I love to float and it's, I need my mop. And I have two of these. I have a small one and a big one. So I should just clean this while I'm at it. So yeah, so this is just regular old, well, it doesn't say, I, I'm pretty sure, oh, it's 70% ethyl alcohol. So it's just alcohol in a, in a gel, you know, it's like a gel. So that's how you do that. All right, so what is this? This is just a, I should have used, oops, this one. And this brush is actually for a technique. Let's see what it's called. It says the Shui um, Foliage Angle Brush. So it's got stiff bristles and you're meant to use it like this. You're supposed to tap in a bush, do foliage, background foliage. So, um, all right, what else did I want to tell you? So, <coughs> I think, uh, so yeah, when you clean your brushes, never, never, never jam them down. Always go side to side and you'll have your brushes will last you much much longer because I'm cheap too I don't spend a lot of money on like good brushes it depends if I like especially now that I'm doing mixed media I'm not gonna put out a lot of money for brushes because I'm gonna be brutal on my brushes compared to um, when I did decorative painting because decorative painting you're you want to keep your brushes super nice and you need to have um, good tools but I wanted to just share this. I'm going to be gluing this. Let me make sure. I remember I said, so my craft room was a disaster. I had several projects, mid midway projects that I set aside and never got back to. So I need to make some silver foil polymer tiles. So polymer clay tiles. So I think I'm going to do that later. But I'm definitely going to glue all of these tiles on here. And some of them I'm just looking at. And they're so stinking cute. So I want to finish this. I didn't just make it for nothing, right? So I got to figure out wish, happy, smile, love, and hope. Then we have dream, live, create, be happy and then I got these little guys play remember when I did this and then I just left it home I don't want to do that like that fly and serenity. Yay. So I will be using fabric, no, 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 no. Weld bond to glue this down. And then I think, you know what, I'm going to go this way. Because I want to put, I think I'm going to put my silver tile on the inside. I don't know. Design is interesting, you know, it take, and I take forever to make decisions, so who knows how it'll end up, and I could change my mind a million times, but I would try and glue this so that it's spaced nicely, because I'm probably not going to do anything like add micro beads or anything like that to um, the grout lines, you know, like to any sh space that's showing. I'm just going to let the black show through. See, I don't like that. I think I need this over here. 
I don't know why. I just think that's better. Um, it's just whatever you like, you know? Uh, but I think that's what it's going to end up looking like. I don't know. Maybe I should put the silver on the outside. See, this would be the other option. Just move. I think this is how it's going to be. The silver one will go on the outside. So I just need to measure this out and just do a little sliver of clay and I'm going to put some silver foil on it and bake it. And then, I mean, I can always cut it because I'm just going to do it. I mean, maybe I'll do it a little thicker because these are kind of thick. And that's it. But I want to finish it because I never finished it, right? And then I'll probably spray it with um, the Krylon clear coat, something like that, to just um, seal the color on there, and um, and that's it. All right, but I gotta do it, so I'll come back when I'm making the um, clay tiles, cause I'm not doing that right now. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to work out, and I'm not sure if I want to go. It's uh, three. It's still too way too hot out, so I might either go on the treadmill or um but my my craft room is so clean i'm so happy and um i hope you guys are too do something that makes you happy thanks for watching